because they they have amazing, which is a former teammate of mine, and I know a lot of those a lot of the players from Origin back from Europe, and it's kind of like a grudge match because I came over from NA. I haven't really talked to them as much, but I know them and they know me at a very personal level, and it's a team I really really want to beat. Welcome back, everyone, to Paris and the 2015 World Championships. I'm Eric Dolanquist. With me is Joshua De Leisman and Mitch Crepo for spells. And we are about to move into game four between Team Solo Mid and Team Aura's Origin. Now, TSM, they've got a chance to start off 0-2 here, which would be devastating. It's not how you want a tournament. And if they do, it's going to raise a lot of questions about can TSM perform at international events. They would match the best Chinese team ever. Oh, did they also 0-2? That was a shocking result. But this 0-2 wouldn't be as shocking. I mean, coming into Worlds, Origin versus TSM was kind of looking like it was going to be this classic rivalry game with EU fighting North America, and then the Korean and Chinese teams would actually be fighting for the real prize, first and second in the groups. But after yeah. yesterday, and after the game we just saw, the complexion of this group and this game is just vastly different. Origin could actually be the titans of this group, whereas TSM looked weak and may struggle to pick up a single game in this group. They look dazed and confused against KT and lacked any sort of cohesion, so they have a lot of growth to do. Yeah, and I mean, cohesion was actually one of Origin's greatest Absolutely. strengths, too. And Origin also, you know, they're able to take that veteran experience and show it under pressure against teams like LGD, like we said. People were expecting to come in and do very well, but uh, now Origin today, they have to prove that yesterday was a fluke. A win over TSM would do exactly that. Yeah, I think Origin just comes into this tournament with a lot of experience, and overall, I think talent for talent, they outshine their counterparts in TSM in nearly every single position. The only question mark coming into the tournament was obviously Bjergsen versus Expeke. Expeke, many people criticized him for his summer split. He wasn't looking that strong. I even called him the weakest member in his team, and I think I can still stand by that statement, but he's definitely playing a lot better. Bjergsen so far has been playing fantastic at Worlds too, so that matchup for me is the marquee matchup of TSM versus Origin. Makes a lot of sense. Well, guys, it's time to check out our starting lineups. On the blue side, it is Team Origin. The top lane, of course, we've got Soaz. Jungle is amazing. Mid lane, Expeke. ADC is Niels. And support is Mithy. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, they are we have to echo that thing you said just a second ago, Krepo, about Peke. He's kind of in world's form, as we say, final see Mithy on support. And on the red side of this map, it's going to be TSM. We have Dyrus in the top lane, fifth time at world. Santorin in the jungle. Bjergsen in the mid lane, as we just saw him talking about the team he's playing against. Wild Turtle Lady Carry and Lustboy on support. Yeah, it's just fun to see these guys still get along earlier, right before this match. I actually just was talking to Bjergsen and Amazing, so there's some uh, friendly banter going on. So both of the teams seem relaxed going into this match, but it means a lot for TSM. You know, it's a difference between 1-1, one 0-2. One, for, for, uh, for Origin here, they could peak in the group here end up 2-0 already so that is completely unheard of because yeah. as you said earlier we expected them to be playing for scraps for third and fourth place yeah and the crowd chanting tsm right now and man these guys need all the chance they can get i mean it's just been so rough you go back to msi you think about the poor performance there summer split was very rough for these guys now here they are down 0-1 they can turn it around like on paper, theoretically, this is a match that going into Worlds, we would expect to be very close. But after how it's been in these last couple days, it's going to be interesting to see how this one turns out. I mean, you hate to judge too much off one game, but that one game was yeah. incredibly damning for TSM. It was. And incredibly encouraging for Origin. So if those trends held true today, it would be a stomp. It would be. And here we go into picks and bans between Origin and TSM. TF taken off the table right away by Origin, not wanting to let Bjergsen get his hands on that. Yeah, they really don't want Bjergsen to be able to take over the map in their game yesterday. Bjergsen was up, or two days, yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Over 50 what day CS. What is it? Where are we? Uh, Bjergsen was up over 50 <laughs> CS on Nogne, and we saw just before the game the 700 damage per minute was about second highest of all mid laners at World. So he was the lone strong performer on TSM, at least in the laning phase. He made some mistakes in team fights. I do think what helped Origin a lot in their match was just some single target heavy CC or just some easy to plan CC. Think of the Annie being Kalista ulti outwards and inwards again, then the Tibbers coming up. If really, if TSM takes note of that and denies that or has a counter ready to that, maybe a Black Shield, think of just playing around that element of hard engage, then Origin could fall into troubles because we've seen them be hesitant in the European uh, split, uh, summer split already, especially in the earlier stages when they were just, yeah, didn't all come together when they were behind. They were very poor playing from behind. So TSM, if they can get some of that hard CC themselves and get ahead, 
that could be the opening. Now we've got the Mordekaiser band back to normal on the red side. Fiora added to that as well. And that first pick might be the Kalista. It was so effective for Niels in their match against LGD, not only from a KDA perspective, but also from his ability to enable Mithy to position aggressively and make strong initiations. That that entire quadra kill from Peke was really set up from Niels and Mithy playing yep. so well together. Yeah, Peke used a shockwave on four stunned targets. They kind of corralled everybody up and made that shockwave really do work. Kalista, the strength of, not only does she trade well in lane, but one of their main strengths is just that she, it, she changed the entire dynamic of the support role, being that you can play beyond aggressive and have the opportunity to get pulled backward. Your flash yeah. becomes as solely an aggressive tool too because you can always get Fates Call out. So you play with such high mobility in these fights and just add another element of raw cooldown. And we've seen that well so far. You need some element of that, just some lockdown to, to really start winning these fights in your favor. Yeah, it's impossible to lock down a support when Kalista can just pull him out. Darius locked in along with that Elise. Now, Darius hasn't exactly performed as well as people expected. What do you think about Darius taking it this time? I think this is going to be incredibly hard for me. <laughs> I think this is the best time Darius could be picked for you, Krebs. Yeah. You have trouble saying Darius or Darius now. It's always correct. TSM's top laner. <laughs> Darius. But yeah, we've seen in this tournament, initially we came in and the pick Darius uh, just got revealed very early in Champs League, but has consistently been countered. Whether he got kited by a NAR, whether we have Marins or Nekton into it. So early pick in this top lane has been punished a little bit in the tournament. I do agree with the Elise pick though. Early jungler is strong, necessary. Yeah, we're all talking in the caster room how Darius definitely hasn't had a good showing here at Worlds. Teams are picking him early in pick priority, but then they're not giving him game priority. Yeah. They're not helping his lane. They're not even sometimes picking early game junglers with him. If TSM wants this pick to work for Dyrus, they have to do the unthinkable, actually camp for Dyrus's lane instead of somewhere else. They did it a little bit in the regular season, but it is by no means their primary strategy. And especially don't do Dragon in a Western style lane swap. It puts you so far behind. It was one of the main reasons we saw Dyrus fall behind earlier today when he was picked too. You, you can't do that, especially against Marin on Renekton. If you have one of these close matchups, yeah, just gonna lose it that way. He's definitely seen it. So Braum, Lulu locked in for Origin. They got the Lulu. Yeah. And wow. they got to wait on it a fair bit too. We have been seeing Lulu making it through into more and more in these pick band phases. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it lose a couple of times. So it's obviously not without weaknesses. In particular though, against Darius, a champion who is already lacking in his ability to stick and initiate on targets, the Lulu becomes even more valuable. This is looking like an early outdraft from Origin, unless TSM can pull some tricks later. I mean, at the end of the day, Darius has what I like to call Volibear Syndrome, where no matter what happens, he still has to run at somebody to engage. He's still, he can't really, unless he has flash, he can't like dash in or anything like that. Yeah, he's got a little bit of range with the E, but he's so easy to stop if you see him coming. Now the question is, where is that Lulu going? Because Soaz actually plays a fantastic Lulu top lane, and that Good would point. mean that Expected can play a secondary carry. We've seen a lot of uh, what they call one carry compositions for a lot of Lulu compositions, and I'm not the biggest fan for that, so I hope Origin pick up a secondary carry alongside of that, especially since the tank presence is already fulfilled from Mithy on that Braum. Bjergsen blocking in that Alistar for Lost Boy, and it looks like it will be Tristana for Wild Turtles. So they've got that late game hyper carry. They've got some engage for Lust Boy now. These are ways to get Darius involved. So is Origin, your last two picks are coming in. What do you do now that you've seen four out of five of the champions on the other side? Well, we get to see what type of early game tempo Origin wants to play with their jungle pick. And we also get to see where this Lulu flexes to. Ultimately, it'll decide whether they're playing more oh, of a baby. protect. <laughs> more of a protect Neil's composition with the Lulu mid, uh, or really just what type of oh baby they, they actually did it. Blind Nivea pick and Nivea. locked in. What? Right. Fortune, yeah, sure, why not? A lot of questions oh here, but blind pick and Nivea is very, very, very bold. <laughs> Has, was Anivia ever played in the summer split in all of European LCS? No, uh, I don't Baker think. played it in spring in Korea. She has, she has certain strengths, but she has a lot of innate weaknesses, mostly due to the high amount of mana cost she has on a very uh, on her basic spells already. Her ultimate also means, yeah, she can wave clear very easy, but Anivia very often wave clears second in the mid lane. This also means that Lulu is going top lane, so this will be a very Niels oriented composition. He has to carry. Also, it's. Actually, just another thing within their composition that's good against Darius. Yeah, true. You think long, yeah. long ago, back in the first season of League of Legends, Anivia was probably the most OP mid laner in the game. Yep. Uh, and a lot of that was because so many of the champions that have dashes and the mobility creep people talk about in League of Legends over the last four years... Came later. Came later. So Anivia, when people didn't have dashes, dominated the battlefield because the wall literally cut off so many people. 
All right. At this time, the solo laners of TSM can actually get completely destroyed by the Anivia wall. There's a lot of answers here for the Darius pick, but overall, it may be just two tunnel vision to deny that top laner because Anivia is still in that matchup in mid lane. It's going to be very Who picky. Line picks Anivia. I don't know. Xpeke does apparently. Origin does, and they they won it against LGD. They weren't using Anivia. They were using Orion. A little bit more common. But this game is going to be amazing, man. Yeah, I've been talking to yeah. Frog and a lot about multiple build paths here, so definitely going to keep my eye on what Xpec is running. Teleport does help a lot of the weaknesses that she had traditionally in lane, True. especially also now that a lot of less people are running Ignite against her, so she doesn't really get a lane. Her egg doesn't get procked that easily. But the first two or three stuns that you cast in lane, at least one of them has to connect if you want any semblance of lane control. Otherwise, Victor will continuously uh, push you in and out trade eventually. Yeah, that's right. So it looks like we are ready to get Onto the Rift Guys Origin versus TSM. Of course, get on Twitter, hashtag who you want to win. If you think it's going to be Origin, hashtag OG win. And if you think it's going to be TSM, hashtag TSM win. Coach is shaking hands, and I'm ready to get into this game, guys. And Nivia, we have seen so many crazy picks already, and we're only three days into this thing. Yeah, yeah. it's got no 18th and a unique mid laner pick so far at Worlds. We came into it past 5.14. Victor is here, Victor is here, Victor is here. Now we see 18 yeah. different mid laners already, and we're wow. only here at day three at Worlds. Yeah, before this day even started, there were 49 unique picked or banned champions at Worlds. It's extended today. I wonder how high we'll get at this World Championship as the meta maybe starts to formulate into something more solid. It yeah. could be one of the most diverse worlds we've ever seen. Yep. Let's see who wins this one. Go to LLEsports.com, hashtag OG win. If you think they're going to win, hashtag TSM win. If you think TSM is going to take this one, let's get into game. That's right, it's time to get on to Summoner's Rift, guys. Origin versus TSM. TSM and Origin, both with a lot to prove here. TSM wanting to prove they can be relevant in this tournament. Origin wanting to prove that their win over LGD was not a fluke. I think the win KT just had may give a little bit more credence to that, but Origin still needs a win here to cement it. Yeah, there's a very good chance that this group has two 2-0 teams and two 0-2 <laughs> games at the end yeah, of this one. Very true. Incredibly interested to see what Xpec is going to build here. The old Anivia build relied very heavy on tier because you just need that much mana. Froggen recently, Anivia King obviously has been playing a more uh, Rod of Ages into Magic Penetration build with the Andres, but we'll see that. We're seeing uh, another five man invade, a lot of invades so far in this tournament. Yeah, we saw a pluritude of level one kills yesterday. Yeah, but man. It's calmed down <laughs> a little bit today. I didn't get to cast any of those games. Oh well, you it's jinxed fun. it. Now we're not going to see any level one kills. What I guess so. Know? I am the anti-level one fight caster, apparently. As far as this goes, though, these are very standard wards placed by Origin, and they were spotted when going into the side of the jungle, and they actually left no backside wards to track specifically what TSM would have done on the other side. So TSM actually had a lot of different options, but they chose to mirror. Now they are the only ones who know that this was a true mirror. Origin still has to slightly guess. Dividing the map in half here, Stan Lanes up coming out. I do like what Rek'Sai brings to the table as a jungler, what we saw earlier in the way SKT played it. Just very high tempo, easy to get back into the game, never really have any any downtime. Continuously adding pressure, and we need that, especially with a, a rather passive mid lane pick like Expecting here on the Anivia. Uh, I can't wait to see what Expecting can do on this Anivia. This is going to be very interesting, to say the least. And Bjergsen, I mean, you got to think that not a lot of people have been practicing against Anivia lately. I mean, We've seen uh, Vagar blindside people in this tournament. Now Anivia doing it, trying to get the stun. He gets it onto Bjergsen. If he comes in, can they land the stun? Bjergsen may need to flash here. Will he do it? No, doesn't lose quite enough health, but that was close. So a really interesting choice there by Bjergsen to blow his heal so early because he was expecting the Ignite to come in. Actually, by the time Bjergsen blew his heal, I think it was a wasted Ignite by Mithy on that gank. It could have been a very easy one summoner spell for no summoner spell gank. It is a waste, but when is Mithy really going to use his ignite again in this lane swap? Remember, with the map if is going to get divided. If they dive Darius, maybe, but what player really wants to go defend that tower? Why would Darius actually go to the top lane here? You That's asked the same question, but it happened yesterday. Like, there's absolutely a possibility. You need to be able to threaten the dive against the top laner in the lane swap scenario. Yeah, I think he'll die 1v3 though anyway. So yesterday, the, the reason Dyrus actually died a lot of times in these lane swaps is because Lost Boy just wasn't on point with his back timings. That's why we saw a lot of miscommunication on TSM side. So if Dyrus really wants to get into this lane, and he has the risk of getting dove, he may need Lost Boy support. I see a lot of pressure coming in from Wild Turtle and Lost Boy on this bottom tier one turret. Same goes for the top lane. Still have that mirrored lane swap here. Who do you think is going to get the first turret? Yeah, well, as of now, the team with Trist, TSM, has the 
tempo advantage on uh -oh. at least the turret pushing, but obviously they're roaming four people up here. Whether or not the Ignite is there, because there's no support or jungler help for Dyrus, he has to completely fall away, and the turrets will both end up falling. Yeah, and uh, playing it a bit safer here. Speaking of safe, Peke is not bad. Dodges a cocoon, flashes, has to burn that summoner, but at least he escapes the gank, and that's going to mean he's in a lot of danger here for a few minutes. Yeah, I like what Santorin did there because they had such an easy time on the turret down bottom with no wave opposition that he was either free to jungle or gank. He ends up getting the jungle and a nice little gank there to kind of even the summoner spell battle within the mid lane. Now Peke has no combat summoners left. Although an Anivia teleport technically can be a nice escape summoner I if guess. you use it during the egg. I mean, at least, oh yeah, you can teleport during egg. Yeah, you can teleport. teleport before you die. Oh, actually. I see. And then, and when then you that it will continue egg. channeling as you become an egg and it can get you to safety. Forgive me for my lack of intricate Anivia knowledge. <laughs> Cyrus right now. Forgive it in the bot lane and the wave is pushing towards him. So he'll safely get that farm, but we see Origin already commit more members to the bot lane. Perhaps they're looking for a dive. And again, Lost Boy is on the other side of the map, so Iris will have to play very careful. Very often he's in these lanes 1v1, but they quickly turn into 2v1s, 3v1s, and very rarely does he get the backup from TSM, even though they picked that champion early for him. As Jad said, the game doesn't really revolve around him, so it's kind of a waste of a uh -oh. pick. It's back a. Maybe in a bit of danger here. Here comes Lust Boy. He's got Santorin with him. Nice wall, though. Denied. Mm. That cow was corralled. It's actually interesting. Many Anivia players don't skill wall up until uh, level 8, I believe, because they just value the two points in Q for extra fading counting, potential and wave clear. So that guy with an interesting ad adaptation. TSM may not have expected that even. Well, I wonder if he took it after he had to use his flash or if it was just something he was taking anyway for safety's sake. Definitely the right approach. Yeah, we'd have to go back and check. You, it, it would actually be a move that would be smart to take after he'd burn his flash level yeah. three. I think Krepo's going to go back and check to see if that's actually what happened. Uh, but because of that wall, it could have very well saved his life. Lust Boy had his flash, so flash, headbutt, pulverize into the damage that that gank could have loaded in with it could have actually been the death of Peke. So yeah. really nice wall. Yep. And right before the gank, he ended up skilling it. Ah, so smart. Great job at Prophet. <laughs> I don't think it takes much of a profit to think that a flashless Anivia is going to get ganked in the middle lane. <laughs> he does it either way. And so, we'll see if he can continue to stay alive. I mean, he was fairly low health, too, when that gank came in. So if he didn't have that wall, he would have almost certainly been dead. And Torin just taking that Rift Scuttler up towards the top of the map. And so far, pretty even game. TSM with a little bit of a gold lead because of that turret. And we see it down in the bot lane as well. Juggernauts just generally don't do well into Lulu. And Lulu also enhances him. That's why she's been such a really big value of a pick here. To see how much CS can Dyrus acquire in this matchup. And most importantly, can he get even on experience? So Dyrus on that champion, Darius. If he's slightly behind, that's still okay in these team fights. If TSM can get that to happen. However, it's going to be incredibly hard to, to get to his targets if he gets kited by that Anivia. Yeah, and we talk so much about the way these lane swaps work and how it's not just about the first turret, it's about what happens several minutes after the first turret goes down. So right now, TSM does have a one turret to zero advantage because they prioritize the push more heavily on the Trist and Origin actually prioritized a little bit onto Soaz. So now, even though the turrets are mismatched, there could be a growing advantage between the Lulu and the Darius, which is what Origin is banking on. They actually did a very similar thing against LGD yesterday in order to get Soaz's Vladimir ahead. We'll see if this pays off quite as well as it did yesterday. Origin is also doing a fantastic job of just neutralizing Bjergsen because they ward left side of mid lane, ward right side of mid lane, then back up, at least support is there, jungle is there, and then expect it to continuously push in Bjergsen. That's all he has to do. Here's a gank in the mid lane. Bjergsen burns that flash right away, saves his heal, but needs to get around that wall. So that's one summoner down. Expect is going to have his flash back fairly soon. It's really been a duel of flash cooldowns here in the mid lane. Yeah, a lot of attention going mid. You never know how the lane swap is going to play out, but especially in a game with Bjergsen, you do expect more attention to the mid lane and both teams are matching. You need to try to keep him down for sure. Pick has the base right now, he's out of mana. Teleport is about to come up, so this is actually a rough point for him sitting on tier with no mana. Limited mana regeneration and overall incredibly weak. If Anivia dives at any point, uh, during like the first seven to eight minutes, her build just gets slowed down so much. Speke going with a very slow ramping build too, so to see if we can keep getting that CS, because it's incredibly hard to play this champion, because you waste so much uh, item gold on non-combat stats, really, on non-valuable all-in stats. I really haven't been paying attention to the bottom lane, but I'm noticing now that the CS is actually plus six 
for Darius's Darius. There's a massive wave coming towards Soas though, so that may uh, end up even being frozen. He can make yeah. it zone off later. He does have a comfortable experience lead here, uh, level six. It'll here. end up being about two waves that crash in. So I wonder how TSM's going to play that, since that wave will have to be mopped up by Origin. And yes, it'll bounce it back, but that that's actually a really surprising change of events, and TSM should rotate that for a Dragon. I wonder how Origin will respond, because Peke's out of mana, he yeah. would need to base and get back for that. Exactly. That wave being pushed in the bottom at the same time Pekka being out of mana could be a big tempo swing for uh, TSM here, but the problem is Xpeka does have teleport. So Absolutely. he can simply just base, get back, and full mana with Deer. Then he can contest these objectives incredibly easily. TSM is actually sending Santorin as insurance. They're going to try and bounce this into the turret and maybe prevent the freeze. This is also actually working out as a pretty nice tempo edge for TSM because they've gotten the turret and they haven't suffered any ill consequences of having that one turret advantage. Yeah, they're taking care of Dyrus this time. And uh, to be fair, you know, Dyrus didn't die in that early dive opportunity that we saw Origin have. He backed off right away. I think he learned from his mistakes yesterday. And things are going much better for TSM overall. Origin, though, their composition is very, very mid-game focused. Like, Lu requires some items. At least you need an Athenes to really get into play. And Nivea needs a couple items here. This is an early game carry, but due to the lane stop, she doesn't really get threatened by Tristana as much. BF Tristana can punish the Kalista. It's incredibly hard to punish the Kalista with just a pickaxe. So overall, yeah. Origin, I think they're very fine oh. with this. Wow, Santorin got it with this smite. The smite wasn't quite up on Amazing. This is an interesting rotation here. I don't think Origin quite expected that. They were probably expecting a Dragon rotation, but instead, TSM completely sends now four to five people up to the top quadrant of the map. They're looking for a turret snowball. I think it's smart because doing a Dragon this early in the game just slows you down so much, and TSM have the opportunity to punish some weaknesses in Origin's composition. Oh, TSM, Dyrus and Santorin coming up towards this top lane, Tier 1. Niels and Mithy. They know what's up, though. Origin also knows that they have two teleporters on their team. Peke just burned his teleport, so they can't support with the full collapse, yeah. and they actually have to give up their second turret of the game. Pings immediately go down onto TSM's bottom lane turret, but Dyrus can actually match with his teleport. TSM is doing a really good job rotating in this early game. This is a much different TSM team than I feel like we saw in their first game of the tournament. These guys look much more crisp. The cohesion that we said wasn't there before is there now. It's a great start. But we have to go back all the way to level one, though. Origin divided the map in half, but didn't up for the standard 4v0 push and then bounced the wave. They set themselves a tower behind voluntarily, but then they didn't manage to punish Dyrus at all. So overall, a questionable move here from Origin. TSM, yeah, they're punishing it well, but they left some openings in strategy too that just Origin didn't punish at all and even can't punish because they have such a passive double AP early, comp like early scaling composition that needs some time to ramp up. Has taking a bit of damage from Wild Turtle. It's, he backs off in this lane. And Origin going for this dragon. They need to get something objective-wise. It doesn't yep. look like TSM is in a position to stop them. So Origin at least able to get something here. It's a smart call by Origin to go for the dragon at this point. When TSM committed four people to the top lane, there is a recall timing window in which the dragon is uncontestable. And Origin was able to take advantage of that window. Yeah, so still a very tight game overall here, despite the TSM gold lead despite the turret lead now the question is you know can tsm push this advantage can they get some more wards into their enemy jungle not a lot there right now this is the part where part of the game where lost boy needs to synergize well with santorin move around the map establish deep vision and then tsm can continue what they've been doing in the early stages of the game which is rotating but that's exactly where we've seen tsm falter in the past that's the struggle right it's part of the game where origin has been so strong during the regular season and especially yesterday Mythy and Amazing, the jungle support synergy, is one of the greatest strengths of Origin. Rek'Sai and Braum are also a nice dynamic duo of roaming. We talked about this with KT as well, too. The score pickaboo combo worked very well against the Santor and Lust Boy duo. So we will need to see more synergy from the jungle and support on TSM. Now's the moment where you push that lead. I'm actually quite surprised that there has been no real gank opportunity for Santor in here. Anivia, very low mobility which is trying to challenge these waves uh, being pushed by Victor. So there could have been a couple of ganks, but Origin has been doing a great job just warding at least uh -oh. one flank at a time. There are a lot of TSM players moving towards the bottom side of the map. Looks like they may want to yeah. try to catch Mythi and Neils, but amazing. amazing. So what's his teleport? So what's his teleport? So does Dyrus. This could be a brawl. It could be. Here we go. Lust Boy coming in, tries to give a knockup. Knocks amazing over, saving that pulverized. Bjergsen coming from the side as well. Santorin lands a cocoon on to Mythi, gets pulled out so immediately. Gets a kill comes in for Bjergsen right off the bat. And now Origin on the run, TSM. Continuing to chase. First blood, though, going to Bjergsen, and that's huge. That's going to be it. You can't chase into an Anivia, but good reaction here from TSM. They're the first team to move, and this is something we haven't really seen from TSM. 
They were, I believe, the only team coming into Worlds with a negative gold advantage at 10 minutes. So the incredibly passive Correct. early game, just leaning back, letting the game happen. But we've seen an incredibly proactive TSM this game so far. Can they keep yep. it up? They've had pretty early game picks in this one with the Elise and the Trist for early turret pushing. But now they've kept Wild Turtle in the bottom lane with no turret to take. And they're trying to hold off this Origin counter in the mid lane. So far, though, TSM has been able to counter every one of Origin's moves. Yeah, Victor Control Mage in the mid lane. If you don't really have an AD whacking away at the tower, two or three seconds, that wave will be gone. So TSM defending their tower. Still have one tower up. They trade that for a Dragon, but all in all, in terms of pressure, tempo, just the swing of the game, TSM ahead. Yep. We'll push those turrets. We'll get the kill for Bjergsen really gotten everything they wanted right now, except for that one dragon, but that's not that big of a deal right now. Yeah, and just look at Expecca's build. This is the slowest possible Anivia build out there. It's tier into out of ages, double scaling components, and that's why Origin is falling behind. TSM will need to punish around the 30 minute mark, because if you then let Anivia keep farming beyond that point, she becomes incredibly strong later on. TSM does need to punish really hard here, because with that slow scaling Anivia build, as well as the fact that they have a protect Callista with Lulu in the top lane, a one and a half thousand gold lead, if that doesn't get snowballed and extended, means nothing to Origin as far as their ability to team fight. Late game, the Darius is mostly useless against all the kiting tools that Origin has. TSM's Baron Vision around the 20 to 25 minute mark, that's gonna be fundamental for them to win this game because, yeah, Origin, they can kite. You know, it's hard to run, run into a Lulu, hard to run into a Nivea, but contesting objectives, running into the dark with a Nivea Lulu is actually very hard for Origin too. So if TSM can get their grasp, on that barrier area, de-warded with a couple of pink wards, then Origin find themselves in a lot of trouble. Origin right now looks like they want to take out this tier one up in top lane. They've got a nice big wave. They've got four people there. Can TSM stop them? I don't think they're going to try. They're just going to let this one go. Nice turret take there by Origin. They're going to have to be able to answer that bottom lane push because it's a huge wave that Dyrus has been stacking up there. Yeah. Although he has no clear vision, within the jungle and he's just going to have to back away. Well, so that's one thing nice I've noticed. Origin. TSM hasn't really been putting too many wards in Ori Origin's jungle. There's zero in the top part of the map, one in try in the bottom half of the map. Maybe Bjergsen's putting another one down now, but they're, they really need to pay attention to that. And that's, again, that jungle support synergy. Yeah. Very can. rarely do we see Centaur and, and Lost Boy roam. So far, that was a good collapse on the bot lane, but that was the entire team working together. Really need to see Lost Point and Torrent communicate. Somebody make the move first, because Deep Vision is also valuable, because it just it provides you so much more. Yeah, speaking of the Vision game, uh, Krep and I were talking about trinket usage and the different combinations of trinkets you can put on a team. Uh, and TSM actually has a somewhat unique combination. They go upgraded yellow in the top lane, sweeper in the jungle, upgraded pink ward dropper in the mid lane for Bjergsen, hmm. and oftentimes scrying over Turtle and a sweeper again for the jungle. So it's a nice little mix of vision as well as vision denial. And it, it kind of speaks to the fact that Bjergsen wants to be such a farming force because he will ward for himself, just drop one pink ward there, doesn't have to invest in buying pink wards and can instead focus on just building damage items. Wow, and uh, despite the early successes for TSM in this game, a lot of you guys out there thinking Origin's gonna take it. I mean, after the win over LGD, can't say I blame you. This one's still pretty close. I mean, LGD was slightly ahead at all times. Uh, it was a close against, game. Against Origin until yeah. that one crucial fight here. And Origin definitely have the, the tools to win that fight. One well-placed wall. Knock up, you know, amazing going in, getting some help from Soas. Could definitely swing the tides in these fights. So, this time we need to make something happen. And step one is always pushing your lanes oh. and invading the jungle for vision. Yeah, the fact that Origin's been able to answer both of those turrets makes the gold very close here. And with the Rod of Ages now, only three minutes stacked up, so not quite there. It doesn't matter, it's not too much of a difference. The zone control of the Anivia, if Origin can set up for dragons first, is immense. I would like to see just Origin yield this dragon. There's no reason to contest it. You already have one. The race to five is very far off, and you're still scaling. You're still buying time. Origin's competition peaks somewhere after 25 minutes. TSM could force a fight, but they need some sort of a flank. You can't engage through choke points, especially not in this Dragon yep. As of right now, though, Origin has the tempo advantage. Wild Turtle is off taking a, a minion wave, and they have the zone control of the Anivia wall that can't be walked through. It's a Dragon. They didn't have to go for it, but if they're wow. going to get it this easily, it's easy. why not? Origin gets a Dragon. Lost Boy comes in. There's a knock about Mythy. Gets pulled out with a base call right away. They could not turn this one around. Expect a may need to flash here. He's got that Dragon show. Cover with the mid. ultimate. Gets out with the flash. I think Pekka holding his flash there was very greedy because now he has to expend teleport to go mid because Soas actually walked all the way down. Soas could have been the wave there in mid. Pekka just immediately flashed over the wall. So a little bit of 
Yeah, miscommunication and greedy on the summoners there for Origin. I still think overall it's a really overall good call good play, because but it could have been better. Dragon, it doesn't lose a single turret. Yeah, free objective, well not free, but unopposed objective really, that Dragon and not losing any turrets for it. And now, I mean, this game is pretty even up. Expeke starting to come into some power. TSM's got to be starting to sweat a bit. That's what you start doing here, nitpicking in these very, very low kill games, because it's all about minor advantages, minor missteps from the opponent being punished, whether it's vision, you lose a jungle camp, you lose a blue buff, because obviously there's nobody going down, so yeah. positioning incredibly important here. And looking ahead, not only what you're doing now, but the next one minute, two minutes, have to be mapped out by the shot colors. Oh, items coming in across the board. Or Team Origin. That chalice done for Suez for a little while now, and the needlessly large rod just picked up for X Peke. So just like we said, the power really starting to pop up now with this Anivia. And again, I you know, am I paying, am I drawing too much attention to this? But when I look at the map right now, I feel like TSM should have a few more wards in yep. Origin side. Am I, am I am I overstating that, or am I right? I think Origin have done a fantastic job predicting where the potential invade could come from TSM, and then it's hard for TSM to get in there. But TSM should be able to move around quicker around the map and then find an opening somewhere. And once you get that first line of vision so. down, you can add some more vision to it later. Another reason that TSM doesn't have very deep warding is because the lanes of Origin have been consistently pushing. The wave management has been strong. The whole reason that Origin was able to get that dragon was because the tempo was in their favor. The bottom lane was pushed up. It pulled Wild Turtle to push. And because of all that, TSM can never invade to get deeper wards. And we see Origin actually taking that mid turret. That's going to give them a tiny gold lead for the first First time. Yeah, and keep your eyes on Amazing too. He never has to spend any time in base, just keep bases, uses the ultimate on Vexai, and every time TSM is ready to walk into Origin's jungle, Amazing is blocking that path because they don't have any deep vision already established. They don't know who's exactly behind him, who's helping him, so very hard. Now, Darius does find blue buff here. He can steal it away. Peke actually very blue buff reliant on that champion, but it's, at least this is the least blue buff reliant build you can possibly do on Anivia. True. He's got a lot of mana. As long as he builds in a Thieves deck, then it's by far the... <laughs> he's not going to do that. I don't think so. I don't think the Needlessly <laughs> Conventional build on the Nivea. Yeah. Not yet, man. Well, mid turret may be in a little bit of trouble. TSM looking to equalize here. Miffy, Xpeke, they want to stop this one. And are we going to see a possible flank here coming in? Doesn't look like it. Kneels all the way, all the way up to the tier two, and bot lane nearly takes it out himself, too. I mean, TSM, you've played season two. You never just group on an Anivia. That is her yeah. strength, that wave clear. The reason, the way you beat Anivia is split push and out rotate, because yep. she's slow. Look, Xpeke is sitting on maybe 7,000 gold earned total in this game, and he still has tier one boots, because huh. he just needs so many items that he's scaling up with tier, a lot of ages. He only found his first AP item after 5,000 gold earned. Crepo, if you're going to pick a late scaling, late activating team composition, TSM's pretty much the best team you could pick it against. Longest average game time in North America, over least 41 bloody. minutes, least bloody in North America. Uh, 0.6 kills per minute on average in TSM games. The average across the world was closer to 0.75, so really lower ratio of kills in TSM games. It's picture perfect for an Anivia to just farm out the mid lane and get to those incredibly expensive items that not only are they expensive, then take time to activate afterwards. And Pekka is actually getting there unscathed. Yeah, I am just want to see when Pekka actually upgrades his boots. I think he's going to do it next, but a lot of Anivia players, and then we stop harping about the build. I just find it very interesting. Even go just grab it on snakes. They stay on tier one boots. So if they go for group fights, it's fine. You know, team fights, you can slow the enemies down, bring them to your move speed. But when it comes to rotating around objectives, and then you can really get punished for only having those tier one boots. Well, there's not a lot of action in the game, so feel free to talk about Xpeke's boots all you want, man. Yeah, one kill, 22 minutes in. I know. But still an interesting game. A single tear rolls down my cheek, guys. It's quickly upgraded by Peke into a Saracen <laughs> That's right. And then it gets really cold, too, at the same time. It's very uncomfortable. Thanks, Xpeke. TSM trying to push this top lane a little bit further. They finally got some wards down in the top jungle. Adaptation for TSM, the double Spectre Scout picked up here, and Lust Boy looking to be the bearer of the Aegis too, because double AP and a Callista as a hyper carry doesn't scale incredibly well into the late game, isn't really 
what you want to make. You don't really want to juggle list the composition, but... Amazing. May want to play here. Oh, Spiderlings taking a cue. Amazing. And a flash in. There's a knockup. Santorin flash. Oh, the the port coming in. Dyrus making an appearance here. Mithy hits him with the cue. Oh, and Lost Boy knocks him back. Didn't knock him up, though. And he may be in a little bit of trouble here. The flash cue for Mithy. They're going to get Lost Boy, and that's going to be a kill for Origin as soon as the ultimate is gone. There we go. The Rend does the damage. Kneels with the kill. And again, hesitation on the side of Solo Mid. They disengage with Wild Turtle's ultimate. Then they see the teleport is being channeled, and Lost Boy thinks he can re-engage with Flash if Turtle doesn't ult it's, Lost Boy can simply just go in with a combo. It's all too familiar for TSM. That's yes. how pretty much all of their disadvantage happened against KT, with uh -oh. Lost Boy dying with the rest of the team not following him. Now with him down, and Flash and Teleport expended in the last fight. It's putting a lot of pressure on TSM to come in, but it's this? still so early, Origin can't kill it easily. Yeah, this is still really risky. They're going to break off right away, Xpeke blocking the path for Bjergsen to come through and, and uh, try to kill him. He actually used his Chaos Storm there too, but they just wanted to stop the Baron. And going back to that team fight again, we talked about TSM needing the cohesion that wasn't there. It doesn't look like it's there, guys. I mean, just look at the vision. Even if it was just one kill, what Origin gets for that kill is a wealth of wards, four pink wards around the Baron, three wards behind it. There is no way TSM can clear that area. So the Baron is delayed and denied for the next few minutes. And mid lane seems open to look for the wall from Xpeke. Yeah, this could be a big fight. TSM is oh. down a couple of crucial ultimates here. So oh, Origin looking good. Boy. Comes no in, ult. gets blown up immediately. Like I said, no ult. Darius coming for the dunks. He gets one. Can he get more? Needs those resets. Oh, they're going to back off for the moment. Wild Turtle gets caught. Goes down. Expecte with the kill there. Amazing. Still looking for another possible chance to come in. Dyrus very, very low, but they'll get out. Mithy with another three man knockup from Face Call. This is why you deny Kalista against Origin. So good, man. So pretty. And this means Origin can then have their cake and eat it too. They win the team fight, they get the turret. They can then easily rotate down and take the dragon as well. They've activated in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, I think, for TSM to come back. Origin just with all the advantages right now as we see them take their third dragon to the game. And if you if you look at that fight again later on, you will notice how Soaz was stuck in a gravity field. And right before, right before he got popped, he managed to get out and just activate his ulti. So if TSM could have synchronized a little better, did a little more damage. Let's watch this again later on. Just yeah. keep your eye on that gravity field. Gotta keep in mind, Lost Boy has no ultimate on Alistair, so he's smartly focused by Origin. Then, yes, the gravity field comes down. It stops the reset from Darius, so he does not trigger Noxian Might, which gives him a tremendous amount of power within teamfights, even though he also missed his Q afterwards because he was a little bit weak. Then just nice stun chain by most of Origin. Yeah, if TSM could have taken down Soas there, the fight could have gone maybe differently too. And also, they didn't protect the wall. Some of the members were pathing around the right hand side. Speke forced them to change their path in that team fight with a really good wall there on Anivia. That's what you want to do, but you have to keep that in mind. It is so predictable. We're seeing some tremendous value from pocket picks here at the World Championship. We really we saw are. the Vagar earlier on from Cloud9's incarnation. It seemed like the team. Invictus Gaming wasn't ready to play against it, and here TSM, it's only adding to their communication issues. They had trouble pathing around map walls, <laughs> let alone walls that can be placed Whoa, by the enemy. going in! If he pulled out to safety, Dyrus gets knocked up. They're gonna toss him back in there. Dyrus getting very low. Another knockup from the Bromo. Chaos Storm doing a lot of damage from Bjergsen, though. That's a kill for Niels and TSM on the run already. No Dyrus. No problem for Origin. They're coming in. Xpeke, have you heard? The bird is a word. A stun on Wild Turtle. Still alive for now. They're still chasing. Lost Boy comes back in. Tries to get the re-engage. They get Niels. It's kills on each side. So far, though, two for Beautiful one. Wall. Eggs for Xpeke. Great egg. Double kill for Soaz. Santorin tries to get it. That spider may never come down. Triple oh, kill. And a triple for Soaz. And that is nearly Support an ace. Fight. It's going to be an ace. Support will come in. Oh, amazing takes that he should not have gotten in the way. You never interrupt the sacred right of support will combat. <laughs> really nice fight overall from Origin. They are understanding exactly how much damage they can do and take in these fights. And they are crushing the TSM who is out of sorts. But yep. that fight pretty much sums up the entire game because we, right now we have TSM all inning a support from a Kalista AD carry here. Three offensive CC spells and pathing used to get Miffy, who simply gets Fates called backwards, lands on a knockup. And this is again, this is TSM tunnel visioning, not punishing Origin where they have to, and then getting punished later in the fight because of that. 
Yeah, yesterday against KT, TSM focused all their damage on an ult at Al Alistair, and again, they focus a support that cannot actually be killed. The chase down with the Lulu, Callista, Anivia is just too many movement and pairing and movement enhancing spells on the side of Origin. There's no real escape. Nice wall, and they secure everything because the Easy death is so long. Easy Baron as well. And if you look at the composition now, yeah, sure, Origin, they look super strong because Anivia can slow you down, Lulu can speed you up, and you think, what a fantastic composition. But if you go it back to like the early game, minutes to activate. Yeah. TSM had so many possibilities to punish that Anivia pick. Take it from somebody who has scrimmed with plenty of Anivia games, you can fall behind. One death is enough to ruin that champion overall. So props to expect it for staying alive. But completely some, agree with you. Some criticism to a C TSM. Also, of course, it's the criticism for TSM. That's the whole reason Origin was able to pick this champion because TSM has not been able to capitalize on any early game advantages. Pretty much the entire yep. split. So smart draft there by Origin, and they're activating on it just right. Yeah, here Origin comes with that Baron buff sieging. There's the wall to block TSM's pathing from trying to stop this turret to go down. It's gonna take a little bit of damage, not the greatest siege ever from Origin, I suppose. Yeah, but look at how safe they can do it if only Pekka had blue buff here, because he can always wall off one side, ulti the other. There is no counterplay possible from TSM, and with Baron buff creeps, it's incredibly hard for Bjergsen to react, so Soul and Steady uh, wins the race here and kills the base eventually if Pekka can keep his mana up. Slow and Steady kills the base, huh? I think that's good advice for any League player, huh? <laughs> This is the part where you agree with me. Yes, yes, okay, Noah. Great, great. Fantastic you. advice. I'm so glad you agree. Still trying. That turret getting very, very low. Amazing jumps in for a couple of hits. Nice big knockup for Lust Boy. Is it going to be enough, though? Mythy comes in, drops that ultimate as well. Backs away. Right now, they got the turret. They don't need more than that. Just back off and be happy. They got the turret, didn't suffer any casualties, and they still have the recall timings in order to set up for Dragon number four. So they are in complete control. That's exactly what they wanted. It was a nice ultimate by Bjergsen, but ultimately, it only burned a couple of flashes, and Origin got the all-important inhibitor defending turret. Yeah. Well, TSM possibly on their last legs here in this game pushed all the way back. They didn't lose the inhibitor. At least they kept that alive. But where do you go from here? I mean, Dragon's up in a minute. Got to stop the fourth one. The pressure is on all over the place from Origin. I mean, coming into this tournament, if you would have told me on the end of day three, TSM will be tied with LGD. I think a lot of TSM <laughs> fans would have been very happy, but <laughs> this group not decides like, uh, not, 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 not like, quite, this. Not like <laughs> this. Not like this. It's like that scene in the Matrix, man. Not like this. But the, the funny thing is, though, or the good thing for Origin, they lost their coach, Ducky, and their analyst replaced, and it does seem that their drafting has been very, very... Also, it's slightly different to other teams, but really, really good thought behind it. Everything yes, makes sense. They're utilizing Soaz's flexibility in the top lane. The Vladimir pick was on point. The Anivia pick has been on point for the specific matchup they've been playing through. And they're putting a lot of emphasis on Niels and Mithy's ability to succeed. And really high credit to Niels. His first Worlds, first split in the LCS before this. This is the team that was in Challenger, so nothing wow. phases this guy. I talked to him yesterday and I said to him, you know, well played. He said, well, I didn't do anything. I just got carried. I was like, <laughs> well, you played perfect. Yeah, I did play perfect, but it doesn't matter because I can only do so much. My team is actually the ones that won the game, so nothing phases Niels at all. That's why he's actually very fun to watch as a player. Hey, you're so right, man. I mean, you don't see many rookies come in as calm and collected as this guy is, and man, it has worked, it has worked out for them this week. That's Dragon number four now for Origin, the fadeaway rend. And it looks like they're ready to try to end this one. They've got that yeah. mid inhibitor down. What I like the most about this draft is they play on stylistic tendencies of teams, and that's something we very rarely see. A lot of teams resort to the meta picks, and they pick the same team comes different iterations, but Origin do something completely different, and it works because TSM's style allows them like to make it work. Their preparation has seemed exceptionally good for LGD and now for TSM. Origin continues to impress. They try to take down this bottom inhibitor turret. Yeah, they're just doing a split push right now, so it's going to be nearly impossible for TSM to defend both sides. This, watching the way they've outdrafted uh, on multiple occasions, both against TSM and against LGD, makes me really excited for the KT matchup we're going to get to see tomorrow. Both teams 2-0 yeah. in this group, seeming much stronger than the opposition thus far. And so much of this has been about Origin's ability to kind of group up and win team fights in the mid and late game. But that's kind of KT's specialty as well. So that'll be a fantastic match. And we can see right here why they split push too. Because there's no Baron buff available. Victor can instantly clear these minions even though they're down one inhibitor. So Origin already knew that was going to happen. So they play ahead of the curve. They make the play first, split push, get another out of turret. We'll likely see them back off then later on to the Baron and then close out the game. So systematic destruction of TSM. Very low amounts of counterplay possible right now for Team Solo Mid. Yeah, and if you told me coming into this week that 
KT versus Origin would be a close game. At first, I'd be like, yeah, sure, man, whatever. But now, I think we may have a good game. Yeah. Great game. In There's fact. a lot of things about Worlds that if we would have told each other yep. a week ago, it'd be like, yep. <laughs> or even no like, way. you know, a couple months ago, it's like, guess what? Mordekaiser is going to be a bot lane champion. Like, well, okay. All right. That's, you have to lay <laughs> maybe, off whatever you Maybe, on maybe, maybe. But he'll be 100% pick ban at Worlds. Then. Yeah. yeah. Not true. Oh, no, not anymore. Yeah. That's true. Up to yeah. this game. Right. Prior game, I Prior think. Game? It was the, up to the game before this. the LGD KT game. He went completely through the pick and ban. A Baron up and about a minute 40. You know Origin's going to start to set up around that. They've already got some wards down. TSM just desperate to ward up their own jungle right now. Amazing, taking out the Rift Scuttler. You know, they look like they're kind of from the same species or the same, like, family tree. So I wonder if Rek'Sai feels any guilt. I mean, they both kind of tunnel underground. She shouldn't want to kill the Rift Scuttler. It's true. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Worlds, anything is possible. Yeah, Wall goes down, separates Lost Boy. Lost Boy has to use that ult right away, gets stunned anyway. They're just going to wait it out. There's the Whimsy. Lost Boy is still going down. He may be in trouble. He is in trouble. They take him out. CC for days. They can outlast that Alistar ult. Now they can do whatever they want. They've trapped Bjergsen a little bit. That's a lot of damage from that Anivia coming in. Mithy takes a bit himself in Origin. I think it's time to back up and set up for that Baron. Yeah, familiar sight for TSM, Lust Boy dying a well, a large distance away from the rest of his team. It's cohesion, man. I mean, Lust Boy thinking it's time to go in. The other team, the other part of the team not agreeing. We've seen it all summer split. We're seeing it now in Worlds. It's tough. Some big issues on this team that are going to need to get solved in the offseason. I do think, looking at the composition even more, the Soas's Lulu pick solves a lot of the issues uh, from that Anivia from Expected because he's continuously being sped up oh for a good wall positioning and then the engage. We see a Q over the wall here, not connecting. So Origin just doling them out. Just keep your eye on these team fights. How Whimsy is being used on Expected, he then gets ahead of his opponents enough to block them with a wall. Usually, it's incredibly hard to land these walls, but Expected has landed wall after wall in these fights. Yeah. Well, he's been around for quite a while, man. I mean, this is not his first run with Anivia or flight with Anivia, I guess you could say. I played a lot season two, too. Sure did. Wall just funneling TSM through that choke. And are they ready for this? TSM just takes the bait. They're going to charge right in there, take out a ward. Well, and they've Calista, got to wait. Nielsa's Callista is in base, so yeah. their origin is playing this one a little slow. They're actually pretty valiantly defending their own ward wow. line. They don't want to. They don't want to forfeit all the wards they just placed just because Niels had a kind of strange back timing. But you can really see the power of Peke right now. Peke is flanking. Yeah, that's right. They're going to try for it. Some knockups coming in. Mithy gets a big up. They take up Bjergsen oh. right away. And Expeke just Denied. destroys Lost Boy again. There's the wall. They're going to go after Santorin now. Meanwhile, Dyrus and Wild Turtle fleeing into the TSM base. Dyrus pops the TSM flare before getting taken out. And there's the origin flare in response. Three flares beat I'm one flare. It. I'm loving it, man. Three is certainly a bigger number than one. You're right about that, Crepo. I feel like you really need to pick your moments better if you want the appropriate effect <laughs> of flare spamming. You can't flare oh, when you're dead, man. so maybe Dyrus should have waited just slightly longer. Oh, brutal. This yeah. is origin. I'm not quite dead yet. Well, here we go. This game's over. TSM looking pretty dead. Is there go the Nexus turrets in Origin? The trend continues. These guys are looking great, and they're going to take down Team Solo Mid. Knockup coming in from Amazing. There's one more. There Let's it is. Dive. There it is. There okay. we go. GG. GG, boys. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How about that? Origin. These guys are legit, man. Exactly what they're expecting in this matchup as well. They carry over their performance yesterday against LGD, which was a much more surprising affair. And today, it's more about taking care of business. It is. Yeah. They had a strong team composition, tailor-made to counter TSM's weaknesses, and they executed on that comp. This is Nivea. I can't believe we actually saw an Anivia. Still, the first 20 minutes of this game are the most important, because that's where TSM failed to punish Origin hard enough. And Origin, they did leave some opportunities open the lane swap. Whether it was intentionally or not, they fell behind the tower, they fell behind in tempo, so... They could have gotten punished if TSM could have got that such necessary deep vision into the enemy jungle, but TSM seems to really struggle with that this tournament, even at the later stages of the summer split altogether. Jungle and support synergy on top of team synergy is just so important. As soon as you start to get a lead, you have to go into the opponent jungle. It's something that Amazing and Mithy do oh so well. Yeah, and it's part and of the big reason they're too well. And as Amazing hugs his former team, you gotta wonder if he like whispers something in their ears, like the Lannisters <laughs> send their regards or something like that. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised, but what a start to Worlds from Origin.
Really incredible stuff from these guys. But the one common factor still is that Kalista. And coming into the tournament, we expected her to drop very far off, but slowly but surely she's moving up the tiers again, and we may see her become pick and ban status later on because all these games yeah. have in common the fact that very often people engage on Mithy, he gets pulled back, a couple of three-man knockups, a couple of two-man knockups in these fights, followed up by the Brahm multi, and that propelled them forward. Yeah, in a game that is so keyed around who makes a mistake. Like, that's one thing we saw at Worlds this year, or we're noticing, is there are actually so few mistakes going on that when they do happen, they're punished incredibly hard with multiple turrets. And just imagine if Lust Boy had a Kalista to pull him back yep. every time he was dying on the exactly. side of his team. It gives the support such positional freedom, and it's being really well commanded by Niels and Mithy. That's right. So, for a little bit of post-match analysis, let's throw it over to Dash and the rest of the analysts at the desk. Yeah, very Later. soon we will be doing soon. that. So. Oh, soon. I just okay. got told Dash was just, oh. you know, taking a, a All right. toilet break, Dash. changing his tie. They call him Dash, but he's yeah. actually not that fast in the end, I guess. I guess that's oh, true. Well. well, he is a cross-country slash marathon runner. He says he is that's fast. That's a slow kind of runner. I don't know what his 40-yard dash time is. We'll have to ask more like, yeah. what would you, I, should he rename himself? What should Dash's new name be? If he doesn't run very fast. Turtle? But that's taken. Turtle? <laughs> well, he's not There's that already wild. a wild turtle. He's not a wild turtle. He's just a regular turtle. So stick, maybe like... Stick with Dash. Standard turtle. Standard okay. turtle. Stick but yeah, that. we'll see about that. I just, I'm just i just very interesting, as you said earlier, that TSM against KT. How is that going to play out? Like how pick and bans, play styles. Is there an innate stylistic weakness? I mean, that Origin, origin versus origin yeah. Can Origin exploit something in KT? I mean... We don't know yet. Probably. I mean, I'm asking you. They, they, they seem they, very well prepared yeah, maybe. for their opponents, exactly. don't they? They do seem very well prepared for their opponents, but it's not like KT is not also well prepared for their opponents. Like, KT has been picking very strong team compositions. The way that they completely counterpicked LGD in that previous game was also very impressive. So there's two really strong draft phases going up against each other there. If I had to say Origin has shown more flexibility than KT has because it's been Arrow on Kog'Ma and really just the straight, straight shooters for KT, they... Yep kind of play really defensive in the early game they, and then win team fights. Yeah. Whereas Origin has shown a little bit more ability to win the early game as well. It's, but honestly, it's super hard to tell. I mean, KT has, you know, I, I don't want to say one style, but they have a way that they really like to play the game. And it's hard to beat. You know, it's a very safe style. It's a very methodical style. And it's hard to find kind of cracks in the armor against KT right now. We've seen that in Worlds. We saw that a lot at the end of the summer season in Korea as well, too. So... I, I mean, if you think about it, Origin, they've got so many, seemingly so many sort of unique picks, unique ways to pick apart teams. I'm really curious. Like, KT versus Origin has suddenly become, like, one of the matches I'm looking forward to the most. And more importantly, after that match, most of the games have been played in the initial part of the group stage. Then we go to week two where they play again. Yeah. And really that second match will be interesting, too, where these teams have watched each other. They've seen the pocket picks come out. They've seen their weaknesses being exploited, but they still have a couple of days of time to fix that. And this group already is pretty close. So those rematches will be incredibly fun to watch. Well, and a best of one is one thing, but a best of five is something completely different, mm -hmm. too. So a team that can be good at preparing for individual games still has a much different game plan that's needed for a big match like a best of five, too. And that's where the test is really going to come in. And now I believe we're ready. We've actually got Shock standing by for an interview. Let's go see what the winners have to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> the winner is amazing. And Niels here from OG after going 2-0 and in their group and beating out uh, TSM. Amazing, of course, ex-player from TSM. Tell me about the strategy you guys played out, because it seemed to be very much catered to the way TSM likes to play. Um, they were, they just left a little open, to be fair, you know? <laughs> if you leave a little open, you basically uh, put yourself on a timer, and we just thought, we pick the better late-game comp, and they don't make too many plays early to mid-game, uh, we're going to win the game, and that's basically what happened, I guess. And something that was the same from yesterday, the first lock-in for Kalissa, we know you love that champion. Nils, do you think other AD carries may be undervaluing her at the moment? I mean, we're the only team that actually picks her in the first rotation, so yeah, I would say that we, maybe they don't undervalue her, but we value her a lot more than them, maybe. I don't know if well, who's right, but I, we like the champion. We make a lot of things happen with this champion. Midi can do a lot more because we have Kalista. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it works for us. Definitely works for you guys. And then uh, quickly on the Anivia, of course, you eliminated a couple of options that Bjergsen couldn't pick. Still, it is quite risky to me in game two of the World Championship. Was it with the full support of the team? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, yeah. but <laughs> explain. I mean, you mid laner, you know, practice <laughs> against Foggen, so it's fine for us to pick it. Uh, but to be fair, Anivia is just an overall strong pick that most players don't play. And 
Um, actually, in Europe, only NukeTech right now plays. And when we faced it, we kind of started to pick it up more and more and thought it was pretty good. And uh, if, if a lot of blind pick options or like counter pick options are eliminated like we did, uh, then Aniva just becomes a high priority pick. Still uh, quite risky. You guys have started working with Hermit for a couple of weeks now, even before the boot camp. This kind of catering to a style to counter your opponent and not just going for your own comfort picks, that's something that mainly comes from him. And how is that going to help you in this tournament? I don't know who wants to take this one. He takes. I mean, we don't always like, go for something that is counter pick to the enemy. We try to get what jumps we like. And I mean, sure, we'll pick this jump because it's better against these champions over another one. But we generally try to just get the jumps that fit our comp the best. Like we, before the game, we try to make a team comp that of five champions that fit together. Five? Yeah, five. Cool. Not two or yeah. three. Mm -hmm. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Whatever. No, but we always try to kind of pick last pick, you know, on red side or something like this. But generally, it's just try to make a team comp for yourself, like five. Champions. Take five. That fit together. I see. I'm sorry about that. Uh, in any case, looking at the group, can you guys maybe shine a light on what's happening here? Uh, because LGD went into this group as very big favorites. Now we've seen all the things that are happening. What do you make of this group so far? Amazing. We are underrated. Like, I think that's what we can make out of this group. Because uh, if you hear analysts talking about us, about uh, LGD, you know, you have some thinking that we can be KT. But I just feel like the Chinese scene overall is pretty overrated, while the EU scene is pretty underrated. Therefore, uh, the imbalance just seems to happen. A lot is going to come out of that match versus KT as well tomorrow for you, uh, you guys. Huge matchup. Niels, this is your very first World Championship. This is your very first split. It was in the LCS. How have you been experiencing the pressure? Because you don't seem to be affected by it at all. Mm, there was never actually pressure for us to perform. So like, we had a goal that we just want to get top six in LCS and then top two, then make it to playoffs. and. Then we went to the final of the playoffs, and then it was like, go to Worlds, and now it's kind of the same thing. Just, we just want to play good here, and there's not really pressure on us to perform or anything. So, yeah, I don't feel like there's pressure for us to do anything, so it doesn't really get to me at all. Okay, well, it shows. Congratulations. Fantastic. 2-0 so far for Origin. Let's go back over to our guys at the desk. Thank you, Shox. Origin, they are two up. Over, <laughs> over TSM handily. You know, uh, they gave away their pick band strategy there, though. Pick five champions that are happy together. I don't, you know, that well, I feel they, like see, they may have doomed themselves for the rest. Well, now we definitely know that Renekton and Nasus will not be together in any of their team compositions. So no mixing of exactly. Well, well let's be on. real. Uh, the, you what know, about Ray's twisted fate though. They kind of made up though. As much no. as we know, we saw we saw Anivia come out. As much as we know, the Anivia was chosen for the increased damage to neutral monsters. I'm gonna go ahead and hand the floor over to you guys because maybe there's some other relevant things about her kit that we should discuss. I love this draft. I thought it was absolutely fantastic uh, from Origin. They get the Callista. They intentionally leave up Darius and Elise. Now, Dyrus doesn't have the broadest champion pool. We already saw that TSM banned Fiora. So what happens? The Darius pick comes out immediately. They prioritize it. But then Braum, Lulu, Anivia. There is no way Darius is doing anything in the late game. And the casters talked about it on the cast. TSM doesn't do anything as a team before 20 minutes, generally. Anivia sits in the mid lane. They already got the dragons. I mean, we'll get into that in a minute, but this is such a perfect kiting composition against what TSM showed. And this also is my problem with Elise. Against compositions exactly like this. Compositions that do not walk towards you. Elise, what's she gonna do? Flash Cocoon? There is nothing else this champion is adding to the composition. So I just don't understand why it gets such high priority, especially when they play things like Callista. They're just so high mobility. I think it would it confuses me. It yeah. honestly does. I thought this was this was an amazing draft by Origin, but they also forced TSM into a hole where the last pick after the Anivia pretty much had to be Vagar or Victor. And then you're in a scaling war against TSM, and they have no hard engage to get onto an Anivia. I thought that was a brilliant pick, and the fact that no mid laner really has hard engage. So when you pick the Anivia in your last well, spot, up. yeah, he has some engage, right? I thought that would have actually been the better pivot is to go with the Vagar, because then you also scale up alongside them. Maybe you can point and click and blow up Niels in late mid game, but we'll have to see. But that was something that they didn't go with. 
and that was an oversight by TSM. And this is a team that has a history of not adjusting to picks that come out of nowhere in the game. They didn't know what to do against the Anivia. I I've been saying that for years about TSM, that when you surprise them with something, they adjust incredibly poorly in the game. If you give them some chances for their management, their coaches to talk to them about it outside of the game, they can make adjustments. But, I mean, it's happened so many times. It's off. Cassiopeia top, MSI, uh, uh, Twisted Fate, uh, Jungle, IEM last year, Swain top lane against SK in groups last Worlds. You surprise them, they lose all of these games. All, all right, of do you want to jump into gameplay? Because we only have so much time. The dragon point that you mentioned, Origin able to secure the first dragon with a scaling mid laner on a tier when they did it. Huge, right? Because all of a sudden, one of the ways that TSM, even with this draft, could have won this game, they got a couple turrets, but maybe you can get an early dragon, you can start to threaten that five dragon. But as soon as, as soon as Origins, with, a, with this kiting composition, gets priority over dragon, takes the first one, takes the second one, then they're ready to fight. They just sit at dragon, you try and stop them, they kite you, that's it. And they had so much more zone control yeah, within yes. their composition. And Victor is good when he's coupled with something else, like Echo. We call it the Venn diagram comp where I am, when you can layer the circles over each other, which is, by himself, is just not enough because it isn't hard CC. And Zyrene, we have to highlight, you know, the fact that Dyrus, 1,900 damage, damage rather, sorry, on Darius. That's less than Lustboy on Alistar. He did 600 less damage, but that's a compositional thing. He wasn't able to lane against the Lulu effectively, and at the same time, there's no way that Darius is getting in. If they were able to get their own Lulu, possibly pair that with the Darius, I think it was too early to pick that champion. They saw it coming. You ban the Fiora, you're throwing all your cards out in the middle of champion select and going, this is what I'm picking. I'm sorry, that is a champ pool thing, and I, I love Darius. Yeah. Like, my first video on the internet is a lesson with Darius four years ago, but if you are going to telegraph your pick ban phase that heavily, that is a champion pool issue right yeah, there. I agree. Absolutely. All in all, a very cleanly won game for Origin, starting in the draft, very decisive win for them. TSM still struggling. Now don't go anywhere because game five is coming your way with Invictus Gaming taking on North America's Cloud9. The action in Paris continues in just three and a half. Play smart, make good decisions, and, and, to, and listen to one another. Control uh, the pace. Yeah, control the pace, I guess. <laughs> Nox amazing over, saving that pulverized. Bjergsen coming from the side as well. Santorin lands a cocoon on the myth. He gets pulled out. So is he A kill comes in. It's kills on each side. So far, though, two for Beautiful one. Wall. The eggs for a great egg. Double kill for Soaz. Mithy gets a big up. They take up Bjergsen oh. right away. And Xpeke just Denied. destroys Lustway again. There's the wall. They're going to go after Santorin now. Origin. They're going to take down Team Solo Mid.